although they are nominal in comparison to the price of the microscope, but still very expensive. So the laboratories cannot easily afford the cost of buying guns time and again. And when you are changing the gun, obviously it needs time as well, and the technician as well, and at the same time, vacuum as well. So, so uh, people avoid the imaging. So increasing the ferrant current will increase the beam current, but only to the point of saturation, at which point an increase in the filament current will only shorten the life of the emitter and will not give you any brightness. And usually it is uh, a shape that when you are operating an electron microscope and it for example this is the morphology of the filament and on the screen of the microscope you get this thing and these gaps filled with brightness then you stop it there. So if there is no red mark on the knob then when you focus the electron gun it gives you the shape of the electron gun on the screen. When you switch on the voltage and then slightly increase the gun current. Then it will show its image because the electrons are coming from different parts of the filament and they are giving you an image on the screen of the machine. Then what you do, these regions will appear dark and the lines will appear bright. Then with increasing the filament current, a stage reaches that it appears as a ball of light. As you are looking into the sun or you are looking into the moon, right? So it will appear like that. So once these gates are filled with light, this means you have reached the saturation level and never exceed the gun current from there because it can damage uh, the microscope. The lanthanum hexaboride filaments are of different shapes. Heat is applied in different ways. Separate resistance wire or ceramic mount filament current is separate from heating current. So, if you look into the filament, the filament tip is labeled. It is the V-shaped tip. And that bias current uh, resistor is heating it a little bit. And this is the cathode. So when you get electrons released from the filament, then you need a cathode to pull the electrons down. When the electrons are pulled here, then towards the positive electrode, right? Then you control them with the electromagnetic lenses which are coils of uh, 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 metallic wires, right? And that electromagnetism then refines the beam. And if you look there, near the tip, there is a small hole and only electron comes down from there. Because if an electron is at one end and at the other end, then the electric field will have different effect upon different electrons and you will not have a well-focused monochromatic beam. So you control the beam of electron at each and every step so that the electrons coming out at larger angles are excluded and even up to the near the screen you can change the apertures to exclude the unwanted or large electrons, <coughs> electrons scattered at larger angles are excluded because it is very difficult, it is not easy to interpret an image. And uh, 
I am not talking in terms of the phase contrast or very uh, high level, advanced level microscopy, but simply if here is a sample and I am taking the energy dispersive spectrum from this, so that if the electrons are coming from here, the beam is thin so that it is not superimposing this grain with this, then I will get the information about this. But if the electron beam is wide, then I can't say that this beam is coming from this particular grain. So, if the electrons are emitted at large angle, and I collect all of them down here, and the microscope column is made of molybdenum, so I don't have molybdenum in my sample, but I will see peaks due to molybdenum in my result. That is why they keep the beam very well controlled through various electromagnetic lenses and various apertures so that no unwanted or confusing beam come here. Uh, this is just a simple schematic diagram the hard cathode which emits electron and that assembly around the, the cylindrical assembly around that cathode is called Wilnet uh, cylinder. Wilnet cylinder. And there is a small hole which through which the electron move by a small potential difference. And once they reach the second slit, then a strong accelerating voltage is applied, and that, that is the wavelength which we need. So we decrease the wavelength by increasing the accelerating voltage. We discussed it in detail in the previous classes. Again, similar in design to a tungsten filament, and there are a large number of uh, electron guns. Uh, I am comparing some of the TIFF configurations uh, from the Dinka company M3, lab 6 cathodes, manufacturers. Brightness, flake tip, about five times that of tungsten. So, this is, this one, the top one, is the very old configuration. And this is the lab 6 lanthanum hexaboride configuration. So that tungsten filament was very unstable. And they replaced it with lanthanum hexaboride, which is a very solid, looking like a ceramic material. So it is very solid and very difficult to damage. That is why it was replaced. So they are here comparing the <coughs> quality of the, length, uh, the modern LB, LAB6 cathodes that brightness about five times that of tungsten because we need more brightness to see something in the electron microscope. If you slightly lose the brightness, you will see nothing inside the machine. That is why the brightness is very important. If we have the standard round tip, then it is 10 times that of tungsten. And if you have the sharp tip, then it is twice as high as standard saturation. Mono spot at about 1400 degrees centigrade. So it gives you that single spot I told you, moon-like thing. So there is no dark features inside the beam. Mono spot at 1500 and mono uh, almost the same as standard tips. Crossover, large in the flake tip. In the standard rounded trip it is 1 to 10 micrometers and there it is 1 to 10 micrometers the same, right? Am I right? Angular distribution, broad, sharp, and sharp. And these, 
use temperature, low temperature, high temperature, high temperature. And lifetime, long life, flat tip, long life, but shorter than flat tip and very short. <coughs> Operation easy, thanks to a large part size and broad adjusting range. Not too, not so difficult and difficult. And stability, high, high and middle. And technology needed, ordinary, high and very high. So when you go, when you have in the start a nanometer scale or uh, in the nanometer range filament, the beam is in that range and it is easy to keep that narrowness up to the sample. But if you have a broad beam, then it is very difficult to collect them into the that sort of uh, limited area. This is tungsten filament and electron cloud is built there. Then initially you direct the beam using the electromagnetic lenses, the anodes and cathodes, to make it into a thin beam. So, filament heating supply and filament. And this is the electron, what a elliptical type volume they form. And it is you who transform the electrons into a beam and give energy to behave like a wave. And in di diaphragm or transmit or reflect from the sample under study. So the electron beam, the electrons are produced, you bring them down to some level, then you apply a strong accelerating voltage, very high accelerating voltage, and that decreases the wavelength. The higher the accelerating voltage, the lower, the shorter will be the wavelength. And when the sample is electron transparent, then it will partially transmit and partially absorb or scatter from the sample. And in this way, you will reach the beam will come here. So again here the beam is broader. And here you use, I have shown you to the, in the lab, that there are many aperture, condenser aperture. The beam is very broad and then you introduce aperture. The condenser aperture is usually of three, four sizes. So you can select among the aperture which one. If you are interested in very, very high resolution, then you need a very, very well-focused well beam and no confusion there because if I increase the intensity of light and you are looking into my palm, the brightness will be so much that the features appearing in my, in my palm will not be visible. So you keep the beam limited, but not that limited to lose <coughs> some information. Right? So you have a, an optimum choice that which sort of condenser aperture should be there. Then when that beam interacts with the sample, then you have objective apertures. It's coming through this whole sample. Then the diffraction spots, you are not sure about the diffraction spots whether they are coming from this crystal or this, because they are superimposed. And it will be difficult for you to further carry the information you got from the microphone. But if you have a choice that you include a selected area, electron diffraction aperture, then you limit it to the area you are interested in. And the multiple spots are the multiple rays which are coming are excluded and only the ones needed are left, right? So the electron beam 
is very wide and broad. The electron mass is very, very small. The charge and all the things are not easily controllable. And that is why you again and again direct the beam onto the sample and exclude the unwanted rays to get only there is weak beam condition and uh, two beam condition. You select specific spots in the electron diffraction pattern and take image from there. And that gives you information about that part, those particular planes in the contrast. The contrast changes frequently with the intensity of the beam. You see many things at one intensity and you don't see many things at another intensity. So you must be very well trained to select the appropriate brightness and uh, aperture and focusing and all these things to get the information you need from there. Sometimes people talk of dark field electron microscopy. So 